What's up with your baby? Today, we making gumbo. Real Louisiana gumbo. Stick around. See how I did it. Cool. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dice up two bell peppers, two small onions, five cloves of garlic, three sticks of celery, and one bunch of parsley. We're also going to be adding okra to our gumbo along with some chicken gizzards. Now, I love chicken gizzards in my gumbo, but if you don't eat it, you don't like it, you don't, you can omit any one of these ingredients. You can use andouille sausage, that's traditional, but we're gonna be using this beef sausage. Okay, so we went ahead and diced up our vegetables. Our sausage, I went ahead and cut them into medallions, and then I cut those in half. You know, this kind of helps stretch the sausage throughout the gumbo. Our bunch of parsley, there's our garlic, and these are blue crabs. I bought them this way from the store. They're gumbo prepped already. They're clean and they're ready for gumbo. I also have some shrimp and three chicken breasts. We cut them into uh, chunks. So we're gonna start off with our chicken. We're gonna go ahead and get this cooked up before we start on our roux. Uh, so to the chicken, I'm just gonna add some Tony Satchers, some garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika. That's it. And we're just gonna give that a mix. Now, over to our hot pan, we're gonna add some uh, grapeseed oil. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go ahead and saute our chicken. We're gonna cook it about 90% of the way through. Um, we're gonna take it off the stove, let it cool off. We're gonna uh, split them, shred them into smaller pieces and it's gonna continue to cook once we add it to the gumbo. Now our chicken is almost to that 90% point that I was talking about. We're gonna let them go a little bit longer then we're gonna take them off the fire. Now that we're done with our chicken, we're gonna go ahead and start on our sausage. So I went ahead and cleaned the pan out, added some more grapeseed oil to the pan, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and brown this sausage. I'm gonna add a little bit of Tony Satchez just for a little extra kick. Now, while that's gone, we're gonna go ahead and shred our chicken. We're not gonna shred it too much. We still want some chunks up in our gumbo. Uh, so we're just gonna kind of pull them apart, uh, shred some, leave some chunks, you know, just have a mixture of chicken. And now our sausage is done as well. And the reason why we did the meats first is because this roux is gonna take some tender loving care. You're gonna have to baby this thing because this is the most important step of making gumbo. It needs all of your attention. Now I added one cup of vegetable oil and then I'm gonna add one and a little more than one fourth of a cup of flour. To me, that's the perfect ratio. And I had to switch my utensils because I didn't want to scratch up the bottom of my pot with this whisk. So I grabbed my spoon. So I went ahead and I added some flour a little at a time because I don't want any clumps of flour in my roux. 
I want to blend it in nice and smoothly. Now you see our flour is blended in well with the oil. And so now we're just gonna keep it moving. This process takes about an hour. That's why I say it needs all of your attention because you have to keep stirring it. Uh, you can see here the bubbles mean that it's starting to cook. The flour is making bubbles and just keep it moving. You know, it's gonna get darker and darker. Me personally, I like my roux to be real dark. If I see that light colored gumbo, that means that you didn't put the love and the time that gumbo needs in order for it to be good. Now I'm doing this on a medium heat because this pot that I'm using, oh, and by the way, this is an 18 quart pot that I'm using, a stock pot, but this pot, it doesn't hold heat well. So I'm doing it on medium heat. Uh, if you have a, a pot that holds heat, well you want to do it on like a medium low and just kind of keep it moving as it goes and you can see the root is getting much darker now that i have it to that chocolate brown color that i want i'm gonna go ahead and add the vegetables I'm gonna add the holy trinity now when we add these vegetables the roux is gonna get much darker it's almost gonna be black but look here it ain't burnt because like i said i babied this thing tender love and care so i went ahead and mixed the holy trinity in that roux and we're gonna let this saute for about 15 minutes And after those 15 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and add our garlic. Uh, you can see that the roux is loosening it up now. You know, after we added the Trinity, it's gonna sweat. It's gonna, you know, release its natural juices and it's gonna get thinner. But we're gonna go ahead and add our garlic. Let that saute for about five more minutes. And then we're gonna add our liquids. Now we're gonna add 332 boxes of unsalted chicken stock. So I'm only gonna add one box first and then I'm gonna stir that in. Uh, you're gonna see the roux is gonna get a little thicker. I did that because I didn't want my roux to break up too much. And once I have that stirred in, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the liquid. I'm also gonna add 10 cups of water. You're only gonna see me pour in two cups of water here, but I'm actually pouring in 10 cups of water. Altogether, it's about 50-50. It's about half chicken stock and half water. And now you can see the roux, it broke up a little bit, but that's okay because once we get to the point where we've added all of our ingredients and we let it cook, it's going to all mend back together. Now you want to go ahead and season your gumbo. We're going to add two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of onion powder, one and a half teaspoons of pepper, and one tablespoon of Tony Satchers. Add four bay leaves. Now, we're gonna go ahead and add our meats at this point. We're gonna add our smoked sausage. We're gonna add our chicken. And also, 
we're going to add our chicken gizzard. I'm going to sprinkle the little tuna satchels on those and throw them in a pot just like that. I'm not going to saute them or anything. So we're going to give that a stir. We're going to let the gumbo come back up to temperature. Then we're going to put the top on it, turn the heat down to a medium low heat and let this cook for about an hour. And after that hour is up, we're going to go ahead and add a teaspoon of ground gumbo filet. Now we're going to start on our okra. So this is how you get the slime out your okra. You add some oil to the pan, add your okra to the pan, and then you kind of fry them, stir fry them, saute, whatever you want. You know, just cook it a little bit, fry it a little bit in your pan. You see, they kind of have some slime on them right now. But over time, that slime is going to start coming out of the okra, and then it's going to eventually evaporate. But while that's gone, we're going to go ahead and start on our shrimp. We're going to give them a little seasoning, some tony sachets and some paprika. And we're going to get that mixed in real well. And as you can see, the slime is starting to come out of the okra. We're gonna let them go a little bit longer. Now, you can see there's no more slime. Now it's time to add the okra to the gumbo. Now, the purpose of us cooking this slime out of the okra is because you don't want slimy gumbo. That's a no-no. And at this point, once you add your okra, we're gonna add our seafood also. We're gonna add our shrimp. We're gonna add our crab. And we're gonna add half of the bunch of parsley that we chopped. So we're gonna put the top on it, turn the heat up a little bit so the gumbo could come back up to temperature. And we're gonna let this gumbo cook for about 15 more minutes until the seafood is done, that's all it needs. Now your gumbo is done, you guys. Give it one last stir and you're ready to serve. Serve it over some white rice. In New Orleans, we like to eat it with potato salad. Get your side of potato salad also and dig in. Now, when I tell you this is the best gumbo that you will ever have, this is the best gumbo that you will ever have. All you have to do is follow this recipe to the T. And if you want to make a smaller pot, cut all the ingredients in half. Get yourself a potato salad. Mm, 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 I'm telling you, A1.